Well, hi everybody, it's uh, Richard here. This is, um, I suppose it's part two of the uh, Tensai uh, TR1030 uh, stereo radio amplifier. And as you can see, uh, now I've actually completed, um, well, almost completed the project this afternoon as I got really on well. And um, so what I thought I'd do is give you a bit of a tour of, uh, of what I've been up to. And then we'll actually uh, switch the piece of kit on and uh, show you the best parts really and how well it sounds. So what I on my last video I was saying that some of the lamps had actually blown. In fact I think there was only one which was around about here at the time. I've decided to um, there were a bit more light on the matter. I've decided to change them all but of course I couldn't replace because you can no longer get hold of the sort of little pilot lights these these type here any longer, at least I've not been able to find any on the internet or on eBay um, because they're, 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 they're actually fixed in when the, when the kit was manufactured and as I said uh, in my last uh, video broadcast this is a um, Akai all but in name basically and uh, this uh, as I found out from this uh, very good information from the Radio Museum website um, which I recommend if you're looking up anything um, it was actually manufactured uh, in 1983, I think was correct. So, so um, what I've done is I've um, innovation as a mother invention, as they say. I've used these lamps here, which are actually 12 volt, 4 watts, and um, they're actually from side lights for cars. They're the ones I use in my Ford, and um, they work very well. I've used them before because they give a nice glow. They don't. They're not over bright. They give a nice glow, and then um, because you've got the uh, lighting plate which sits just inside there, you might just be able to see here, like a, it's an acrylic plate that transfer, takes the light forward over the main um, scale of the radio and also over the VUs there. Uh, you'll see later and it really looks nice actually. So they work very well. I had to use some what I call chocolate block type arrangements at the back because um, there was a slight challenge in that um, uh, the bulbs had to be put in, the lamps had to be put in through the top, so they have to go through the top and then they fix underneath. Uh, some of them actually, the holes were, weren't were actually drilled out correctly. That one, for example, had to go underneath and then I've had to fix it. Um, this one here, it just dropped through the holes, so I had to use a, t a tie to fix it in place. Um, but they're all fixed in place here and I've just used some ties just to make sure that the cho chocolate blocks, um, connecting block, is, and doesn't foul the main scale ribbon which is here you can see that uh, coded uh, um, checkered ribbon here in any way and um, I've used some low wattage cable um, so so for these little lamps here I had to um, solder on the tabs they come with they they fit into like a fitting in your car and I bent the tabs out and then um, soldered and then bent them back and then used some insulation tape um, I think you might be able to just about see that there, just there we are, there's one there, um, just to make sure it's well insulated so it doesn't uh, short out on any of the other electrics, which would be an awful shame after all the hard work that's gone in. Uh, on the cleanup, you can say, see it's got really well actually. I've used um, some cleanse cleaner, which is like a, a slight rough. I don't know if rough is the right word, but um, has a sort of a, a brazial effect, a brazi uh, slight abrasive effect. Being very careful, of course, because the um, the, the actual uh, lettering on the on the coding here, on the labelling, as it were, um, would rub off. So I've been very careful about that. And also, I've given the all the knobs a, a second clean and a polish, uh, including the rack handles here, which have come out really well, actually. And I straightened them out. They were terrible. They were obviously being dropped at some stage. Um, as I said in my original uh, video, it's high gauge aluminium. This is really thick stuff we've got here, uh, which of course adds to the weight. I mean, this thing actually weighs a ton. It really does. I haven't weighed it, but it must be at least um, five kilograms, if not more. Quite easily, I would have thought. Um, but it's quality stuff. Akai used to build some real high quality. Um, kit and uh, this obviously comes from that same era. Most of the weight of course is in this amazing transformer here. Uh, two large um, and uh, 
uh, capacitors here, smoothing capacitors, and then of course you've got the usual stuff, the heat sink on the back. Doesn't generate that much heat. Um, just on the lamps though, they probably will a bit, but no more than probably what was originally there. I've had it on for about an hour this afternoon and it seems to be running all right. Um, so that's the main thing. I'll be interested to see once um, there is a bit of headroom between the case, the steel casing which comes and then fixes here. So there is slight headroom. So there is a there is a little bit of um, leeway there. But I'll see, and uh, I'll be testing out in the office and uh, uh, with the, all the other bits and pieces, and just swap it over with the JVC I've got up there at the moment. So just to see how we run for a while. Now, uh, I've rigged it up, the kit, I've linked it up and uh, to the Akai tape deck. Now that tape deck, you may have heard on the last video some interference on the good old Denon radio here. Well, that was due to the solenoid. There's a slight problem, I think, on the solenoid on here. It doesn't like this lamp sitting on top of it. There's something, there's a short going on in there somewhere, which I need to take some time out to have a look at. But I haven't, for this test, I'm sure it's going to work, ha ha. So, um, let me just take a slurp of tea and I'll power up. So let's power up here. Uh, I've got it tuned into Classic FM. There we go. So, now you've got on the front here, you've got stereo lamps come on and also the uh, FM, obviously it's on uh, FM wavelength at the moment, so that's come up and also the lights, lamps have all come on. If I just take these la lights, these ones off. There we go. You can see the ones on above, obviously you can see they're all working, but it gives quite a good glow. You don't want it to be too overlit. At the same time, you want to be able to just see the wavelength when on a night. And to give an ambience as well with the the silvery aluminium and chrome, which I think is, looks really smart. It looks as well as the one it does in the picture, I think. Now, if you compare mine to the one on the photograph, I think it looks as good as, actually. Um, so, this is Classic FM, and it's on loud. I've got loudness, so it's playing through the Technique speakers. You can take the loudness off. There's loads of volume on here. That's off. I think it sounds better with it on, but then I'm a bit of a bass man. And then you've got mono stereo, so that's mono stereo. And you've got a mute on and also a filter. When you take the, put the filter on, it does actually take some of the bass out. So it's a low frequency filter, which you know you can use. Um, tuning's quite easy. Feet up Friday as per usual with dance anthems from six, and that is your the radio one. I've been for you, and it's only on number two at the moment, so we'll go higher than that. Hello. There's plenty of volume there. back to Classic FM. Now, the tape uh, is interesting. If I just switch the Akai tape deck on, and then if I switch to tape, now there's two tapes on here. It's interesting what they've got on here. They've got this switch called duplicate. I assume that means that you can have both tapes running, but I haven't tested that yet. Then you've got source two to one, and then one to two, so I assume that means to from one to the other. Um, so I've plugged it up to one. So if we go to, I think it's that one, and then switch on here, we'll find out which one it's going to play. Oh, we are. This is two to one. Stuart Burrows. I wouldn't know that was the cassette actually. Okay, it's 
really sounds really good. It's got a really good separation on it, even on the, even with the two-way speakers. There seems to be real good separation on this bit of kit. I'll be interested to see what it's like when it's rigged up for Jammo speakers. So it's not bad going through techniques, uh, just the ones I use on the bench here. So all I've got to do now, put the lamps back on again, is uh, put the top on and just clean the rear ports up again as I said I was going to do, just to make sure continuity, connectivity is there. But um, so that's the final part really, apart from perhaps I might do a video actually when I get it in the office, I've got to disconnect all the stuff up there to swap over from the JVC, because the JVC in my office I think it's got fantastic sound separation, I haven't, there aren't many kits that I would agree on that. Um, it just might be my ears. So that's definitely the, the, the almost the final part then of the long, medium wave and FM stereo receiver TR1030, um, the Tansai band and uh, produced in 1988. Thanks for listening and look forward to your comments.